All right. Hello, everyone. I'm Sarah Holly. I'm the director of St. Paul Ramsey County Public Health. Um, on behalf of Ramsey County Public Health and our Environmental Health Division and Ramsey County Property Management, I want to welcome everyone to this Environmental Service Center listening session this afternoon. We're glad to see you here. Thank you for joining us over the noon hour. We appreciate your time. As you've seen, um, we are recording this virtual session and we'll post it on our website so that those who are unable to attend can view this information at a later time. Um, please mute your audio for now. Um, and please make note of any questions you have so that we can ask, or so you can ask them at the end of the presentation. We'll take a little bit of time um, this afternoon to present some information to you. Um, you can also put those questions in the chat um, and Andrea and team will um, get to them at the end of the presentation. Next slide, please. So today you're gonna hear from a few people um, representing Ramsey County Public Health um, and Ramsey County Property Management, one being our interim division manager, Ray Eden Frank. She'll present some information about environmental health in the service center. And then Jennifer McMaster will present from property management. Um, I'd also like to introduce the environmental health division staff, John Springman, give a wave, Pete Miller, Nawa Ahmed, Andrea McKinnon, and I think James Homoken may be joining us later on um, from property management. Um, these are all staff that are working on this amazing project. Um, we also have staff from LHB, our design firm, here with us today. Um, so we may be deferring to those folks for any questions that you may have throughout the discussion this afternoon. Um, Really, the objectives today are pretty simple to introduce the Enhancing Environmental Health Services Initiative, which if you've attended past sessions with us in the fall, um, we'll um, talk a little bit more about that. And of course, getting into the main reason why you're here this afternoon is to discuss plans for the Environmental Service Center and to, of course, hear from you. So again, jot down those questions that you have, any comments you have for us. Um, we're really just excited to share this next phase of the project with you. Um, really quickly, let's go over some group agreements. Um, you know, turn your camera on. I'll just start with that if you're able to, um, especially during the discussion part of today. Um, and when you're speaking, of course, you know, mute your microphone when you're not speaking. And again, add those questions to the chat or jot them down um, as we kind of move through the presentation. Um, we really want to hear from you today. So share your thoughts, be open-minded, listen actively and respectfully when others are speaking. We're going to share a lot of information today. Um, speak from your own experience instead of generalizing. Um, if you have a question, ask the question. We're here to, to do just that um, and to take in your comments and feedback and input. Um, but please be respectful and refrain from any personal attacks. Um, and then, you know, don't dominate the conversation. Allow others to be heard. So step up and step back. I think we have a smaller group today. So the floor is yours once we get to the discussion. I don't think we'll have a, a issue navigating the discussion. Um, so we do want to hear from you. Um, it's really important as a part of this pro process. Next slide, please. So as a part of all of our public events, you'll even notice at our county board meetings, we um, acknowledge the land that we are working on, that we play on, that we live on here in Ramsey County. And so I'll just take a moment to read our land acknowledgement. Every community owes its existence and vitality to generations from around the world who contribute their hopes, dreams, and energy to making the history that led to this moment. Some were brought here against their will. Some were drawn to leave their distant homes in hope of a better life and some have lived on this land since time immemorial. Truth and acknowledgement are critical to building mutual respect and connection across all barriers of heritage and difference. We are standing on the ancestral lands of the Dakota people. We wanna acknowledge the Ojibwe, the Ho-Chunk, and the other nations of people who also call this place home. We pay respects to their elders past and present. Please take a moment to consider the treaties made by the tribal nations that entitle non-Native people to live and work on traditional Native lands. Consider the many legacies of violence, displacement, migration, and settlement that bring us together here today. And please join us in uncovering such truths at any and all public events. All right. 
So as we kind of segue into the presentation today, um, I want to frame, kind of set the context of this project um, in terms of the Ramsey County goal, goals and priorities for the county. Um, the county has goals around well-being, prosperity, opportunity, and accountability. Um, the project that we're talking about um, today really supports our community well-being strategic priority. Um, the county also has a priority of residents first, which includes effective and efficient and accessible operations. Um, the Environmental Service Center is another key component of this work that we're doing and talking about this afternoon. So we just want to make sure that we're setting this within the context of the Ramsey County goals and the strategic priorities for our county. I think now I'd like to turn it over to Interim Division Manager Rayeen Frank. Ray? Thank you, Director Holly, and thank you all for joining us today. I can't see all of your faces or name tags, but I know there's uh, a number of you who have joined us today, so thank you very much. <clears throat> um, so this leads us to really why we're here today, to talking about our Enhancing Environmental Health Services, which is our current initiative, which includes the Environmental Service Center, which we'll get to in the next couple of slides. So really, Enhancing Environmental Health Services came from our response to community feedback, it's a new system being developed to improve the accessibility and the participation in recycling and waste services for all the residents um, in Ramsey County. The system will align with our county goals, as we talked about earlier, of um, and is consistent with our residents' first approach. So we're really aiming for a redesigned system that will better address equity and environmental justice, serve more residents, help residents manage a wider variety of materials, be more cost effective and provide greater access to programs for all of our residents. And a key element of this is our redesigned uh, county owned environmental service center. So next slide, please. So what is an environmental service center? And here we have it outlined and I'll just kind of go over, go over these points too, that it's a facility for the collection of recyclables, food scraps and household hazardous waste. Household hazardous waste includes items such as cleaning supplies, paint, fuel, batteries, used oil, um, bulbs, electronic waste, et cetera. This is similar to, but expanded upon our current services that we offer at our Bay West site on Empire Drive in St. Paul and our mobile sites uh, throughout the county. This will be a permanent location for fix the clinics. There's also gonna be a free product reuse room where the community can find items like paint and automotive fluids and household cleaners, again, similar to the service that we currently offer at Bay West and space for community education programs. All of these services will be available to residents for free, and it will replace the services that we currently offer at Bay West on Empire Drive in St. Paul. This will be a new county-owned facility. The location is um, at 1700 Kent Street in Roseville, near the uh, Rice Larpenter intersection. And um, the facility will be built um, to B3 2030 sustainability standards. So this is similar to the LEED uh, lead certification, if folks are familiar with that, but it's specific to state-funded Minnesota projects. Next slide, please. So now the next couple of slides, we get into some of the um, visuals. And one of the reasons why we've invited you here today is to get a glimpse of um, what this potential site could look like and get some feedback from you about what you think looks great and what you think is missing. So these, this slide is um, the uh, some examples on the left is the Washington County. That's an existing facility uh, in Washington County in Woodbury. You can go visit it now. It's actually open uh, for Ramsey County residents as well. You can drop off. You can If you have anything to drop off, you can go there and uh, see the facility and kind of see one of the models we've used to base our programming and our service and our, our environmental service center off of. And then um, in Pope Bud Douglas, Minnesota, they are currently in the process of uh, designing a center as well. And this is their conceptual renderings of their facility. Next slide, please. So this gets into the inside of the building and some of the sampling of the types of amenities that could be included inside of an environmental service center. So um, we have space for uh, educational space, as you can see the different uh, kind of classroom style and, and other, um, yeah, there you go. Thank you, as you can see the pointer. Uh, some educational spaces, uh, obviously the space to drop off waste, that's kind of critical. So we've got some drive through areas uh, where you can drop off waste, and then the uh, product reuse room, 
where any of those materials that can be reused by a community are, are put out and, and can be taken. So um, we, uh, after this, let me see, I got, I got two different notes because we're doing this slightly differently from uh, in person. So I, I got thrown off for a little bit, but um, so we really want to hear from you about what's missing, what you like and what's missing. So if your thoughts come up as we're going along, place that in the chat. Um, and we'll also give folks an opportunity once we're done talking to um, do some share back as well. But please don't hesitate right now if you want to, to use the chat function as well. Next slide, please. So here's a sampling of some of the outdoor space, which um, is really exciting that we're going to have uh, some nice space outdoors to do, again, some educational uh, learning opportunities. Um, again, you can see it like an outdoor classroom. Uh, and um, some of the community, the feedback we've heard from earlier engagement with the folks are really interested in native gardens, pollinator gardens, um, butterfly gardens, that type of thing. So um, we're, we want to be responsive for that as well. Um, next slide, please. So how did we get to where we are today, uh, now in um, April of 2023? This has really been a, a long-term, even before 2019, which this timeline starts, um, listening to community and um, hearing about things that were, were missing, frankly, from our current system. So in 2020, we did a really, uh, we did a sort of an official evaluation of our environmental services offered by the county. We hired a contractor to do some in-depth looking. Um, we circled around to um, some uh, services in other parts of the country, as well as even in Canada to find out what other folks were doing. Um, and we did uh, some community engagement and um, other types of things to gather information. Then in, um, <clears throat> 2021, we officially launched our, what we're calling our Enhancing Environmental Health Services. And um, then in the fall of 2022, we did a number of community conversations. So some of you might've attended those. We did two online and two uh, virtual, or that's the same thing, two in person, sorry. Uh, and um, we did those targeted at locations that were close to the facility and really reached out to residents and um, folks that are within that one mile or two mile radius of the facility. And now this round of engagement, we're doing a little bit broader. Again, we're doing the online, but we're also doing, um, uh, for example, tomorrow we're doing a session in Shoreview uh, because this is for the county, it's for the whole county. So we are currently um, in the, we've uh, completed um, the first phase of design and we're now doing community conversations and then we'll get back into some of our um, further design for the project. Next slide, please. So as I said, we did um, a series of community engagement in the fall, and um, am I I'm on the same slide? I think I'm on a different slide. Uh, yeah, so yes, in the fall, uh, we did um, a series of sessions and surveys, and what we heard was that 94% of residents are looking forward to using the new Environmental Service Center. Residents are excited about one-stop shopping for recycling and disposal services, excited about community space, both indoor and outdoor, and are excited about a convenient accessible location. We heard uh, from residents concern about the impact to the surrounding area, traffic, safety, and noise being three of those, and ensuring accessibility. We had about 80 people attend um, the, re the, the sessions uh, last fall. So um, now our next slide, please, is how we're addressing your concerns. So. Um, as far as the impact to the surrounding areas, uh, we will be new, putting in new plantings, uh, trees and, and plants to provide a buffer between the site and nearby neighbors in the park. Uh, the hill between the site and park space will help with buffering as well. And we will be conducting a traffic assessment to help ensure minimal traffic disruption to surrounding areas. And we're continuing to ensure accessibility so that the site, as we, you know, we, we chose a site, and I think Jennifer is going to get into this a little bit further as far as like the, the accessibility of the site as far as location um, and its location um, along public transit lines and public uh, walkways. Um, and next slide, please. And I will turn it over now to Jennifer McMaster. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Ray. Um, I um, have a couple of slides to talk about uh, the project site itself and um, some preliminary planning, block planning that uh, we're, we've been working on uh, for in the building. 
So on this slide here, um, you see the project area highlighted in red. Um, the east-west street on the south side of the site is Larpenter. And then uh, the major, uh, one of the major north-south streets uh, just to the west is Dale Street. Um, we settled on this site um, at 1700 Kent Street in Roseville after a thorough, a thorough assessment of accessibility and convenience. Um, one of our criteria was to make sure that this project area, I mean, obviously is in uh, Ramsey County, but also within a 10 minute drive of the majority of um, residents in Ramsey County. Um, so chose this site based on accessibility, convenience, cost, as well as um, the amount of space required um, for this type of facility. Um, this was done uh, with input from residents and uh, here we are at uh, 1700 Kent Street. Uh, benefits of this site um, is that it's centrally located. It's along some uh, transit routes. It is currently county owned land and uh, there is no building there right now. So um, it's a blank slate for us to um, add the Environmental Service Center. Next slide, please. Uh, this, uh, this diagram here zooms us in a little closer to, to our building site. Um, so again, you see uh, Larpenter along the bottom of the page there. And then the gray arrow going north, south, um, that will be um, the road into the site, which is Kent Street. Um, you see the proposed building in white, kind of in the middle of the site. Um, so as you, um, as you come in, uh, you'll go up Kent Street. And then if you're dropping off um, materials, hazardous household waste at the building, you'll take this loop around um, into the covered drop-off um, where um, staff will uh, take the items out of your car and then you'll be able to loop back out onto Kent Street and then um, on your way to Larpenter. Um, that, oops, if we go back once, um, there's, uh, if you take also take that loop, um, there's visitor parking um, along the south there as we, um, on the next slide, we'll take a look at some public areas in the building. But if you go all the way to the north end of the site, um, there's a loop there for uh, dropping off compost and other recycling materials. Um, another feature that uh, Ray was talking about uh, as she was presenting was uh, the buffer of trees that you see along the north and the east side of the site there. And then uh, there's also a walking path along Larpenter for access into the site. Next slide, please. So this takes us um, one more uh, zooming in again on scale of the building. Um, the image that you see on the left there, you see uh, like a, you see the drop off space. So you see a couple of cars and then the dot, dotted line there as, um, as you would see the cars going through the drop off area. Um, and on the right hand side is a, a focused uh, plan of the public areas of the building. Um, you can see uh, in the green there in the upper left hand corner of the plan is the reuse area. Um, that's where uh, products will be dropped, products that are dropped off at the facility that are still usable um, will be made available to residents for free for their use. Um, the areas in blue uh, at the, along the bottom are education spaces um, to be used for fix-it clinics and also other educational and community programming. And then uh, back on the site plan there um, outside between the parking and the public area, um, you can see a little bit of the outdoor space, kind of the blue half circle down at the, at the bottom of the plan there. 
So we, we hope um, to get some feedback from you today regarding um, these areas that are included within the in the building. And with that, I turn it back over to Ray, I believe. Yes, thank you, Jennifer. So how is this going to be paid for? The solid waste fund, which is generated from the Ramsey County environmental charge is what we're using to build the environmental service center. For those of you that live and work in Ramsey County, you may be familiar with this charge. It's a fee on the trash collection services and it's part of your trash bill. Um, the projected cost for the project is between 27 and $20 million. And there will be no increase to the existing county environmental charge as a result of constructing this facility. Uh, so there'll, there'll be no increase uh, in cost to residents or businesses from this project. Next slide, please. So next steps, we're here, we're doing these um, community listening sessions. Uh, this we've done two last week and then the one today, and then there's another one tomorrow evening at Shoreview, uh, which maybe someone could put the information in the chat about. We welcome you to attend that as well. And at the, um, the advantage of the in-person ones is we have these pictures on big poster boards. And so you can come up and really get a picture of um, what we're proposing here. Uh, we also are doing a resident survey, um, and I think there might be a direct link to the survey. I know if you go to that web page, you can get to it, but again, maybe somebody could put in the chat the actual direct uh, link to that survey because we'd love to hear from you through our survey. Um, feedback gathered through this process will inform site and facility plan, and we will have preliminary facility designs to share with community in early summer. So we're going to be back offering these services again this summer. Um, again, probably with in-person and online opportunities so that we can share some of those preliminary uh, facility designs. So um, at this point, we'd really like to turn it over to y'all and um, see if there's any questions, um, if there's any slides you want us to go back at to look at any of the pictures so you can provide some of that information as far as what is missing, what do you like, what is missing, um, and then we can also answer any questions that you might have. I see that Lydia has their hand up. Go ahead, Lydia. Hi, I am wondering, earlier you said that there's a permanent fix-it clinic room, but didn't mention, will you still have fix-it clinics rotating around the county so that they're accessible in different areas as far as distance? Thank you for the question, Lydia. We are, um, that's definitely something that we will want to have community input about, about how accessible this location is, and does it make sense to have all of our Pixel Clinics lo located here, or does it continue to make sense to rotate those um, throughout locations in the community? Uh, Andrea, I don't know if you have anything else further to comment about that. No, nothing to add but it's helpful to hear from the community what what works best for you and it sounds like Lydia you'd like to have the option to have them in additional locations so helpful for us to hear thanks well I'll say personally this is fairly close to to me but in general I was thinking of others yeah I appreciate that um Andrea and Ray and Jennifer it looks like there was a comment earlier by Michelle Carey cover drop-off is nice so um you can use it no matter what right recent weather proves us right every time, um, like the reuse room too. So I appreciate that comment. It looks like we have a question in the chat. Um, could you talk a little bit more about traffic flow and to the to and from the site, um, in particular on days when there is a wait for the drop-off functions of the center? Sure, I can take that. Um, as you uh, drive up uh, Kent Street, You'll notice that um, the turn in um, to the loop for the drop off is uh, two lanes wide, and that's to help with queuing as um, we have those busy, busy days for spring, spring or fall cleanup. And um, so there's more areas for queuing there, and then um, goes back to a single lane as it comes um, out through the building and then back to Kent Street. Thanks, Jennifer. And we have another one from Michelle. Will this affect current county compost sites or is this in addition? 
This will not affect our current sites. All of the sites that we currently have open will remain open. So this will be an additional site. Uh, if I could clarify too, Ray, um, yes. by compost, you see in the map, it says compost. It's not an actual you know, drop site for yard waste or uh, we're not physically composting there. That's a spot for residents to come through and drop off their food scraps, which will be composted elsewhere. And so that's just a very small you know, portion of the facility and won't affect any of the, um, the drop sites that we have currently in place around the county. I see that Melissa has their hand raised. Go ahead, Melissa. Thank you. Uh, I'm the Built Environment Sustainability Administrator at the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency. And last time I attended one of the open houses, I was super excited by your support, at least on camera, verbally, with uh, the idea that I had suggested, though probably not, not necessarily new to you, about allowing for building materials and household goods to be dropped off. And I'm just curious if that's still on the table or could that still stay on the table and reuse that table too? No, I'm just Bad pun, yeah, not particularly clever. Anyways, um, that is something that I'm seeing a lot of counties inside and outside of Minnesota starting to offer within uh, similar centers. And I'd love to do whatever I can to help make that a reality. Thank you, Melissa, I appreciate the comment and I appreciate folks circling around and circling back with us because that's uh, really helpful for us to have those continuing conversations. Um, we are in the design phase right now. I don't know, and John, maybe you can speak to this a little bit more um, or someone from the design team too, um, as far as you know, what we have space for, what we don't have space for. Um, and this might be a really good conversation. I don't know if we've ever met with you um, offline, Melissa, you know, one-on-one -on -one, that it might be good to, uh, uh, knowing that, you know, you're, you're a partner with the MPCA. And so um, maybe we could have a conversation too, and I could get a little bit further clarity of what your vision is and what that looks like. Because obviously um, some, some, one of our constraints is going to be, is going to be size, you know, frankly, um, and that we're not going to be able to do everything um, and be able to house everything here just because of um, size. So. I understand. Yeah, and it's scalable. I mean, there's a Anoka County has a very, very small township with a very, very small reuse center, and I am just blown away with what they can do. Um, and uh, Becker County has uh, built a location that also offers for limited reuse opportunities, but it can be as scalable as, as need be for size. But of course, when you're developing something, if there is the potential for a bigger scale, it'd be great. Uh, happy to to meet offline. There's a lot of yeah. resources out there that exist um, that I can point you to, and and non um, non metro counties are actually starting to add these to their um, future reuse centers as well, or their future service centers as well. I just wanted to point out to Melissa the LC from the map there that there is you know an area for additional future expansion um, to the north of the facility. And then I believe also that other marking to the south of the loading dock area could potentially be um, a spot for future expansion. Currently, uh, the design is such that it needs to fall within our operating budget and our, you know, our bare bones, you know, um, I guess operations for household hazardous waste and then some, you know, additional things. Um, but um, yeah, yeah uh, size and, and and budget are kind of like intertwined right now. So we're, we're trying to kind of, you know, keep within those lines too at this point, but that's not to say um, for sure, you know, we can consider things, you know, uh, going down the road here. Oh, that's fantastic. I mean, that makes a lot of sense because we can't necessarily see what the future brings, but you know that there is going to be probably more need for more collection of more reuse items. So I, I think that's a really great idea and I appreciate that. I'll say that um, after I attended one of the, the first virtual open houses, the Star Tribune actually had a mention of building materials for potential reuse as part of this system. And I'm like, really? Okay, was that a quote from me when I attended or was that something that had been said among staff, which I would only assume. Um, but anyways, I was really pleasantly surprised to see that uh, mentioned in the Star Tribune, though, of course, that does not promise anything. And I know that. Question from William in the chat. Any further details on when the food scraps pickup service will begin this year? And I can take this one. I can say that we are launching a pilot right now, uh, this month, to a, a small number of households. Following the pilot, we'll begin rolling out to all residents in Ramsey and Washington counties over the next few years. 
So stay tuned for details on those larger phases of rollout, but that will begin after this pilot is complete. And then we have a question from Jill in the chat. Oops, I just scrolled away from it. Jill asks, is there a two lane queue for the drop off of material, uh, removing the material from vehicles in addition to the two lane, lane waiting queue? I can cover that one. Yes, in doors, there is a two lane queue inside that allows for two lanes if necessary. However, we like to, we'd like to stage you know, those cars one in front of the other because then uh, uh, collection staff, a labor is not crossing across traffic lanes that way. And this has been a manageable, um, um, I guess, design over at Washington County where they have a similar, you know, two lanes going into one as they enter the facility and they've really never had uh, much of an issue um, with, you know, huge backups. And, and actually the two lanes leading into the building, a different uh, this concept design of this show is kind of individually, like if you placed all those cars in there, how many cars would that be wrapped all the way around to Kent Street, and I believe that is like at 42 right there. So you could actually, you know, um, have 42 cars waiting in line before anything would even spill out onto Kent Street. So that's quite a few uh, for household has this way. So we just typically do not see those numbers at our um, current facility um, at Bay West. Thanks, John. Thanks for the question, Jill. Question from Christy. It would be, be great to see public art inside or outside incorporated in the, in the design especially encouraging local artists who reuse recycled materials as in a mosaic or environmentally themed subject matter. And I'll just say that I love that idea. And I know that we've um, looked at some of the examples, uh, for example, at the Washington County site in Woodbury, they have some art made of crushed aluminum cans um, is one example. And um, we also had our, um, one of our former staff, Michelle Jin, who was working on this project, was particularly enthusiastic about this as well and had some ideas and suggestions that we will um, un uncover it as, as we move along. It looks like Lydia's hand up is up. Go ahead, Lydia. You mentioned that there'll be an education room. Is this going to be reservable by residents and or cities within Ramsey County, or is that just for Ramsey County hosting acti activities? Such a great uh, question, Lydia. These are the kinds of things that we don't necessarily have answers for today. And so um, we've got folks who are keeping track of the questions and we will put that in the um, remarks as something that community is potentially interested in. Okay, another question in the chat. It looks like trucks and residential vehicles could be exiting uh, at the exit at the top of your map. Is this correct? Do you anticipate any issues with this? I can address that one too. So yeah, residents have an option um, if they are in the household that has a waste collection loop that you see there, they can either um, exit there if they have, for whatever reason, got in the wrong line. Um, however, if they are in uh, coming in just to drop off food scraps or some of the other recyclables, they would enter in that um, upper loop and then that rotates back around and then leaves back out on Kent Street. So those that's you know, two-way um, directional after you get past the recycling there. And uh, we don't anticipate any you know, problems with traffic you know, working uh, against uh, each other or cars working against each other as they're coming and going through that area. Sean, I think the, the person maybe was wondering whether people exit might be able to exit northward, like along that big dark oh, gray arrow. No, and uh, I, I don't know why, you know, that's an issue uh, uh, that I, I kind of had with this map early on was they're showing these arrows pointing north and west and um, not understanding that. Um, yes, that roadway does continue that direction for a, a short stretch, but then it, it kind of ends, um, you know, it, at the uh, Volunteers of America facility up in the upper left-hand portion of that uh, site there. And so that's, that would not be an option for residents to uh, to exit back out in any of the uh, the connecting streets. That way they would have to go back down to Larpenter uh, to, to exit the uh, facility. Thanks, John. Okay, next question. Any consideration on planting native Minnesota plants or pollinator plants 
in the green space around the facility. I'm wondering if Lydia from LHB wants to take that one. I was just thinking this would be a great one for Lydia. The short answer is yes, but um, Lydia may have some more specifics and uh, details to share. Yes, absolutely. I'm so glad that this is a interest of the community as well. We definitely plan to um, plant a variety of different ecosystems um, within the site. So there'll be upland areas where we might do some short grass prairie plantings. We might do some demonstration areas where we would show um, pollinator lawn species as an example. We might do some lomo turf examples. And then there will be also be stormwater facilities where we will show some of the more wet um, species. And in all these cases, we'll be looking for opportunities to do uh, first plantings to show how the trees and the, and the ground can work together and to support as much habitat and diversity on the site as we can. Yeah. Thanks, Lydia. Okay, another question from Michelle. Any traffic control on Larpenter to help if folks are turning towards rice when leaving? To not have backups and frustrated folks that are going the other way. I think midway on a busy day. So I think that would be people turning left out of the site, right? Is there a chance that as people are trying to go left, they might hold up a line of people trying to go right? I guess I could uh, start by answering that by we are just this morning, I've seen an email come across about procuring um, a company to do a traffic study uh, for their, this area. That's what is next you know, steps. And um, they would assess this and I'm sure make a determination if we had to engineer something in that for a, a left-hand turn lane. Um, so that's still in the works, um, just not quite that far ahead in the process right now. We are definitely considering it though. I just wanted to say that. Okay, and then revisiting Jill's question about traffic flow, I don't think we answered that one quite yet. Um, I think Jill's concern, it, it relates to the way that residential vehicles and semi-trucks carrying materials might interact on the site. And I think Jill is saying, looking at the dark blue line, uh, how, how, do, how might semi-trucks and residential vehicles interact on this site and how might that be made easier via site design. Can anyone speak to that? I can speak to that too. That is um, coordinated around, you know, scheduling um, basically as the trucks tend to come and go when we're not open to the public um, at our current facility. So there's really no um, interaction there. And that's even on a, a much, much smaller, tighter, um, you know, uh, uh, footprint um, as far as collection and, and trucking and everything else goes. So um, we can coordinate around that that way and then also it's just not going to be um, as busy um, as you know a solid line of cars or many trucks wanting to come and go at the same time so those trucks at the loading docks can still um, you know exit and then uh, leave uh, through that loop and probably just you know again keep eyes open for cars that are coming as they're they're, they're leaving but there should be no um, interactions of them kind of you know, getting in the way of one another and um, you know some other operations uh things to think about too is that um these um, amounts that we're collecting through at recycling and at where it says compost aren't going to be such that it's going to be very busy with you know um those being swapped out uh very frequently you know every single day it's going to take a while for those to uh fill up and then we can schedule around operations hours again to make sure those are serviced more or less when the, the public's not there Question from Melissa, question and comment. Thank you for the pedestrian circulation route and not having it cross any auto traffic. Will that path be able to be used on bicycle? Will there be bicycle parking available, perhaps under a covered area? Would you like me to address this? Great. Yes, please. Um, so indeed we are developing the design. So I'm, I'm speaking about things that are still under development, but um, we do anticipate that we will be able to accommodate bikes coming up near Kent Street. The route going down towards the other corner of the site, that one, as being pointed out, that could accommodate bikes. The one going down that direction is likely to need stairs because of the steepness of this hill and not wanting to um, rip up too many of the trees and, and things that are on that hill. 
once we do get bikes close to the building, we are showing bike racks um, available to visitors on that side of the building and the book side of the building as well. And the bike racks are right now showing up underneath a roof overhang. Um, so suggestions that you're making in the current design. Thanks, Lydia. Question from William. Will the slide deck be available on the website or at least the site layout and timeline slides? Yes, we'll make that available online. At this point, I'm checking for any raised hands. We might have a lull here. Please don't hesitate to come off, off mute and chime in with any additional questions or put any additional questions in the chat. Lydia, go for it. I'll apologize in advance. I may have missed this. I think Melissa might have asked, but when you say that you're going to accept recyclables, I'm curious what that includes, if that's just anything you would regularly put curbside. And then also you mentioned the reuse room. I'm curious if that's just going to function the way the current hazardous waste reuse room does on Empire, or if that will be expanded to include other reuse items. John, you want to take the take that? Sure. Uh, again, right now uh, the space allocation is for materials that we're currently pulling from HHW that would um, be more along the lines of what Washington County is doing, and and not so much you know other usable items. Uh, the other thing to consider too is if you're accepting materials in, you can't broaden it too much beyond um, those materials because then we start seeing just about everything, you know, come through household has this waste, which um, creates, you know, operationally um, a whole variety of issues. So um, yes, we will consider other things in the, in the future. I know even the um, Washington County facility has a, um, you know, a book, um, um, like a little book library and in, in, in installed within their reuse area. So, you know, those are some things to consider uh, adding, you know, to the space as we know that we have um, room available, you know, to expand into some of those other, um, you know, those other things. And is it the same for recycling that you'll be taking that it'll just be standard glass, metal, plastic, bottles, cans? Yes, uh, we have it um, identified completely. Um, all of those, we have a, you know, the basic list, you know, cardboard, um, but we could, you know, be adding, you know, um, shrink wrap, you know, whatever, I guess we feel uh, moving forward is going to be something that the public, you know, really is in desire of, of having to handle that. Maybe there's not another good outlet for, uh, we'll consider those things, but yeah, it, otherwise, yeah, the basics of, you know, some of the, um, you know, recycling and glass and um, corrugated and some other things. Uh, I know we have a list that we've uh, put together and Pete, uh, maybe you can help out here if you know those off the top of your head, some of those other examples. Outside of the traditional recyclables? Yeah, if I'm just missing anything, um, I can take a look again at what we had anticipated here for, because in design, we were looking for X number of spaces for certain recyclables to fit in that area. And um, just going back, I can't recall all of the ones that we had uh, considered when we were in that part of the you know, design phase. Yeah, if I recall, it was kind of the traditional plastics. And then we might've had a couple that were redundant based on volumes that others are seeing, especially with cardboard and things like that. Um, but any feedback on you know these other items is helpful as well. Christy has a suggestion in the chat on that vein. Um, could the recyclables drop off include a drop off for the plastic bags that currently require store drop off? Thank you for that suggestion, Christy. Another comment in the chat from Jill, how will the room uh, that will be used for fix-it clinics be structured? How many fixer tables could fit in the room? I don't recall either, but I know it, if you've been to one of the fix-it clinics, we're designing this space to be on the larger size, side of some of the spaces those are in, knowing that those run a bit more smoothly when we have more space. 
So if you've been to one, it's, it would be on the larger end of the spectrum in terms of spaces where we've hosted them. And it will be designed to have a lot of electrical outlets, be a flexible space where we can move tables around. Uh, so hopefully be a nice, comfortable and beautiful, bright space for fix-it clinics. And a couple more questions in the chat for things to collect for recycling. Scrap metal, Lydia suggests, and for Michelle, styrofoam recycling, like styrofoam coolers. Uh, yes, uh, for sure. Scrap metal was one that we were considering. I just completely missed that one. Thanks. And then another question, is this next to the off-leash dog park and Trout Creek Trail, or is it taking over part of that area? Yeah, we can go. It's, um, and it, uh, I don't know if someone up from property management wants to address this, but it's adjacent to the dog park. It's not going to be um, taking over any of the dog park area. Yeah, I don't know if you can see well enough on this uh, photograph. And if you come tomorrow, I think this is one of the, we have at least a couple of the maps that are blown up really large so you can get a little bit of a better uh, perspective in person. Next question, uh, programming questions might be a bit too soon, but are there any preliminary plans for how often those fix-it clinics would run? Uh, right now they run once a month. We are open to feedback if folks would like to see them more frequently though, but that's our existing cadence with those. Lydia, I see your hand up, go ahead. Has any consideration been given to having any form of lending library here? I'm thinking tools initially, but lots of other ones as well. You want to take that, Andrea? Otherwise, I say yes, we have we have discussed this, um, and it's definitely in our um, thinking a toolkit came to mind, but our 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 pot or what are of different ideas. I don't know if you have any other further thoughts on that, Andrea. No, it's helpful to hear these sort of questions for us, though. And as Ray mentioned in response to a previous question, right now we're space is our constraint, but there is there's potential for future growth. Thank you for that. Anything else? The chat has quieted down. I don't see any hands up. Thank you all for joining us today. Sarah, I don't know if you wanted to say any parting words. No, I think this, we um, appreciate your time and energy here. Um, as Ray mentioned, as a part of, oh, here we go. We have another comment. Lending Library possibly lend out three sort recycling bids to use at public events. Great suggestion. Um, so as um, the team of, has mentioned, there's ways that you can still provide feedback. I think if we wanna put the ask environmental health email back in the chat, there's a survey that's open right now, but that we really wanna make this an iterative process where we're engaging with you along the way. And as Ray mentioned earlier, there's gonna be a third opportunity to engage this summer um, to take a deeper look at where we're at with our progress as a county. This is a really exciting moment for environmental health and for public health. Um, and we just thank you for engaging with us. Um, share the opportunities with your neighbors, with your friends. Um, come engage with us. And I'll just put the Wednesday event in the chat. So that's Wednesday, April 5th, this week from 6 to 730 at the Ramsey County Shoreview Library. And so um, as has been mentioned, there will be um, displays there that you can actually come and look at. If you're a visual person like me, um, these visuals are really helpful. The same staff will be there to answer any questions um, and to take your feedback in. So we just appreciate your time um, this afternoon and look forward to, to seeing you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Have a wonderful Thanks, day. Thanks everyone. Really appreciate everyone's participation.